Okay, so we're back over here, and fear not, I've pushed on a little bit just because this is purely, it takes forever, okay? So actually what we've done is, you can see we've got the splinter down on here. Um, it's very straightforward. Now, you've got a couple of options with doing splinter camo. You can either go in and put, let's face it, the entire lot in, mask it, and then spray it in one, or do it in sections. And to be honest, I'm a great believer in doing it in sections. It's easier, it's faster, um, and I think it's a lot less messy, okay? So why that? What I mean is, if we look over here, you can see down this side, what I did is I did this area, okay? And then I went off and did somewhere else as that drying, then I masked that, and then we went down the next one, so forth and so on. So you're working it along in sections as you go right the way through, okay? Now, there's a couple of different ways of doing this as well as in how you go to actually go about doing the splinter. Do you want to use lots of little bits? And to be honest, as you can see, this is what all this stuff down here is behind me, um, is because I reuse the tape, because obviously being cheap, but you put on a bit, and then a bit, then a bit, and you can make up the panels out of here. They're over here, they're drying, so obviously when you come along to reuse them, you haven't got wet paint, get to get them on your fingers, then onto your model, and all the rest of it. So that's the idea of laying that lot out, because I can just reuse it time and time again. Or do you want to actually use a wider tape, something like this, physically put it down on your cutting mat, let me just move that over there, literally something like this, okay, then you can look at what you need, all right, and you're thinking, right, okay, well, I can roughly work this out, so it's gonna be something along the lines of it needs to have a chunk there, and then it's gonna come down a little bit like that, and then it's gonna double chunk back on itself a bit, okay, and then it looks like it's sort of swoops down a bit, and this guy over here looks like it roughly is going to come up here somehow. Obviously, we've got the dark section on this. Okay, and uh, I don't know. It looks like it's just literally going to come right off the top. All right, then you can come along and think, right, okay, so we've got our reference of it just now on here. And then we're thinking, right, okay, so it's going to be off that second wheel as it comes forward. Okay, so it's about there, okay, and it looks like it's going to come up to around about something like that, okay, and you can mask it. Now this back one, as we said, because obviously you're just masking the, the lighter area, well, as long as you've got in the corners, you can come in, all right, and we've got this one here, so again, we're looking at it, it sort of comes down, allowing for obviously the turns, lumps, and bumps on all of this. It is something like that, okay? So we can just pop that in there. Then we've got a tiny bit just down in that sort of recess. So actually what you can do is, what I tend to do is, down here you can grab a corner of something, okay, and then you can literally overhang that down in there just to give that effect that's a real problem one down in there probably going to avoid it okay so actually all we do is just pushing it down push it round and flat because it's like an overhang on this one okay and then what we're going to do we're just going to grab a very small piece of something just to pop over that corner Hopefully. Okay, we're just nudge that into place. For some reason it really doesn't want to stick on that. Really, really doesn't want to stick on there. Let me just grab a corner of it. There we go. Making sure it's covered. All right, so that's the, the area we're going to do. Then we'll just protect the bottom. Okay, so we're just protecting the underside, although in reality, this would spray through. Um, so I'm not that worried about it, because as I say, you, they wouldn't mask up, I don't think, the underside like this. Okay, so we're happy to have our, all that is. And then you grab your paint, come along and spray it through do. Or do you want to do it the other way? And that is to literally make up little squares. You can do exactly the same thing. So down here, if I just overlap it, you can see in both, I would have come in and we would have gone just something like that. And then we could have used another shape. Obviously that one's very easy. But down there, we would have roughly made a little shape. So it would have been something like, um, we just come in. It's gonna be something like that. Okay, and you could have then come in and pop that in, 
something like that. You see, and done exactly the same way. So it just depends on which way you physically want to go about putting the tape down. We we'll have to use both of them. Then we we'll grab our paint. All right, and for this one, oh, cable's twisted. Okay, we're actually using the uh, sand. We're spraying it down neat as well. We've got a little bit left over from yesterday. Get rid of that. So we're not thinning this because we don't want it to get underneath the tape. So we're just gonna put a couple of drops just down in here like that. All right, then technically I should be protecting the surface. Let me just grab this. I just don't wanna get over spray on my mat. Okay, and then 90 degrees, keeping it dusty. Trying to do that grill. Both directions of the grill. Just goes in there like that. Okay. And then you can demask. Actually, if we just get that. Normally, you'd let this dry just for a minute. But you should be able to zip in here. I'm going to say those bits because they're going to be wet tape. <clears throat> and there we go that's the splinter for that back all right because this one's then going to have the darker color which we do in a moment and we're going to go right the way and just repeat everywhere all right so what you want to do is literally just give yourself some time for that to dry so go off and do something else so for instance what we're going to do is uh, we're going to a nice place on top to show you over a curve okay so let's just have a look down on here so if we have a look at doing perhaps some of these uh, little Tetris type shapes just down on here. These square bits we've got over here would be perfect for this. Okay, so what we're going to do is, I tend to orientate the same way as I've got the instructions. Okay, and then what we're going to do is, let me just double work in all this out. So we want it to be, and obviously it doesn't matter if you've gone slightly or right. You can see here we've gone slightly off kill. Not a problem because actually we're gonna fix that by replacing it. All right, so what we're going to do is, we're going to put this guy just down like this. It's going to go that way. If we grab some of these, this guy is going to come up from the bottom. So I'm going to take it slightly higher than we've got here already, just to correct that bit that sticks out. Okay. And as I say, by using all your old tape, you're not going to use up too much. All right. So this guy is. Uh, ding, ding, ding. Actually, we are going to have to fix that one, aren't we? Uh, let's forget that one for a minute. Okay. So then this guy is going to just be... So, have a trim on that one. So this guy is going to come up. Just like that. This bottom one will just close it off so it comes up about halfway. Just about there. And as I say, it's just a case of using your bits of tape you've got floating around. Okay, so this guy is going to come up just about there somewhere. <clears throat> and this is why it seems like you're going through a load of tape, but really you're not. It's not a problem. Okay, now I'm going to take this further than it's got on here purely because I think it looks better and it's my model and I can do it. Okay, dog hat won't be handy. Okay, and that's it. So that's our little shape down on there. Now we just need to blow that out just to get rid of everything we got down in there. Now this maroon color, I haven't actually used it at all. Here. But I have to say these paints have worked extremely well. I have no problem with them at all. These are the new Vallejo smelly ones. And as I say, they've absolutely worked a treat. Loved using them, not a problem. Okay. So now we can use this guy. So we give it a good mix. 
did have a shake a little bit earlier, so it should be okay. Okay, now this is this deep color. We're not going to need gallons of this, so we're not going to fill it up. Okay. All right, so we just check our flow. Crikey. Looks strong, but I think it's right. Now, if you're worried about overspraying all the bits and pieces like that, then obviously you can remask. Come along with 40 mil. I've got it, lots of it down here for some areas, imagine where you're normally gonna have problems. So, you know, just be wary of how you do it. And then you can unmask this. And there we go. All right, so that's down on there. Then again, these bits will go off and dry. Okay, so if we just try and pick another one, a little bit complex up here, we're gonna be coming over here with some curves and various things. A lot of this stuff, to be honest, is on flat stuff, it's not a problem. But like, if we do this zigzaggy one up here, okay, so with this, so we just grab some older tape, with some nice tape, okay, some bits all over it. Uh, okay. So again, with that, I would be inclined to do a, just to make a one up, literally put it in your cutting mat, cut it and do it. Don't forget the other way you could do this, if you photocopy these and blow them up slightly, you could use them as a, a direct template as well and just copy them. Okay, so this guy is then gonna slant off somewhat at a jaunty angle, so we'll follow that. Okay, so again, I'm gonna rotate it the same direction as what we've got down here, just to help things out. All right, so this guy's gonna come up here. He's gonna go second panel across. Looks like it's about two thirds of the way up. Okay, so that will go around there. We can use a little bit more of this just to protect the, the top. Okay, then we've got this one. It's going to come down at an angle, so it's a third panel across, and it looks like it's going to come slightly down a bit of an angle, just near the corner. Okay, and these are drying out, so we can reuse these. Okay, then it's going to come right down onto here, which is fair enough. And then this one looks like it's a 90 degree, so we can just use the, the sort of 90 degree off of this. Okay, so it's just gonna come, where does it go? Second one across and in. It's about there. Okay, this guy looks like it's gonna go pretty much the distance right the way to the top. We've got enough on here. Uh, almost. So it's gonna come from the Yeah. So as I said, we're going to use artistic license on this, just a little bit, something like that. All right, and then it looks like it just, if it, I'm not sure if it disappears under that toe, uh, the missile launcher, but um, it sort of stops there somewhere. So again, a bit worried about overspray on this guy, so we're just going to use offcuts, some of the bigger stuff, things like that, this stuff. Okay, just to protect ourselves from any overspray and bits and pieces. We've got something else we're doing here. That'll do. All right, grab our paint. And again, by using it neat and keeping it quite dry, you shouldn't have a problem with actually going about it, okay? So. this one just a bit. Now the great thing about splinter, if you go wrong, actually no, I don't think we did. It's quite close, but I think we're okay. If you go wrong by any means, you can easily overcoat it. So if we can get this off in one lump. Okay. Keep these bits because they're handy. There we go. That's the next 
section on there just like that but if you did go wrong and perhaps you had like a funny edge or you know the the angle's not right this one down here is technically not like the instructions as we know it sort of goes different but what i could do is easily come in now with the actual uh, the lighter color and change it okay so you could just pop back in the sand and put in a square of it i wouldn't be too worried about overcoating it because you're not really going to see it on armor and stuff like that even if you've got a small step it's not going to be a problem but down here technically isn't true to what we've got here but it's a little bit of artistic license and if we wanted to we could just put a light bit of sand in there put a v up into here and we could actually go back to you know being spot on personally i wouldn't worry about it they're all going to be slightly different i would have thought and away you go but now we've done those two areas so what you can do last one we'll just do up the back here so what we'll do is we'll use a bit of the thicker stuff all right so we've got this guy just down on here so we'll just to go across there like that and again if you're using uh, over rough surfaces like this i wouldn't worry about it too much i think guys are making too much of an issue of a exactly how these things work and go as long as you keep dry 90 degrees from above you should be absolutely fine okay there's that one and then this guy's going to come across here now i've got a fingerprint just down here and i'm trying to cover it now so I'm wondering if we can just going to extend it a little bit further purely because I've got a fingerprint in it and I can lose that fingerprint. So that is going to come up and then obviously this is going to come up here and then there's going to be a step. So what we're going to do is we're going to follow this guy up here. Then we'll use another smaller part. So we've got this guy just here. We need a straight edge on it. So again, we just make a 90 degree, so you've got a 90 degree cut on it. We know this is going to somewhat come in around about... Uh, what does it say? This one is probably a little bit shallow. Perhaps it comes a little bit further. I don't know. I'm going to keep it the same as the other one. Okay, but then this guy is going to be... I'm just trying to work it out where it is, somewhere like that. Okay, again, and check your flow, make sure you're good, and then so as long as you don't make it too wet, you should be absolutely fine. The only thing you do want to do probably is let it dry. Uh, don't be a little bit like me and be a bit hasty here. And there we go, that's that one on, just on the back there, just like that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is carry on putting them around absolutely everywhere. But these light fuzzy edges on there, I, honestly, I wouldn't worry. By the time we get in there, we're going to dry brush this thing. It's going to have a weathering wash. It's going to have all these things. Those edges are going to disappear and they're not going to be as hard as you might think. But honestly, the real thing, I imagine if you look at it, you're going to see them as well because they're going to do it the same way. Stencil against it, spray on. You're going to get these things down there just the same. Okay, so there we go. We are finished and there is our splinter on actually i must admit it's a really cool scheme now this isn't exactly a hundred percent accurate because quite frankly to try and do it a hundred percent there's other ways of doing it as we said before one of the other ones would be upscale it take the plans upscale it but because you've got complex curves and you're going over things it's never going to be exactly the same for instance this guy at the top here isn't the same as this one on here because trying to actually wrap this around actually is two parts and it's a moving part as well so uh, this is because it's a two-dimensional plan it's easy they just paint it onto this because it's on a curve it's going to have to be slightly different some of it as i said is very accurate and we're pretty much there like this guy on the top is pretty much what we've got down here these guys here this one on the back pretty much this down the front a little bit different purely because we've got to bend it and try and get it around the headlight that we got down here obviously they don't have that trouble and little things as well so down here on the back system we got these down down here we've done the similar so we've just brought this one round um i haven't actually got the darker sand color on there this one went a little bit awry got it too wet as we were doing it and everything else like that and as you can see we've got the one on the back which is pretty much is what we got down here the ones on the front obviously it's just on the upper plate probably mine the trouble we've got is this one over here should be further over uh, and probably a little bit thinner but i think we're pretty much i think you know really in the great scheme of things we're okay and then down on the side here 
this under one we basically got the same type of thing going down here and again maybe mine are a little bit thicker but i'm not worried about it at all we did do the touch up on this we just added that extra bit on there and we're good to go and this one down the back we've put that one in and although it's over the grill set and you can see it i might come back in with the sand but the reality is that's probably how it's painted uh it would have been all that color anyway but when we take this apart as which we can do now hopefully we can do this now it should just all peel apart again we're going to get overspray in here but if you wanted to so this could come off now okay and that's how we held that in with just a little bit of tack okay you could just pop in now and respray that area which is something we might do but reality is that's probably how it is all right so i wouldn't worry about it too much and i won't certainly worry about tidying up all these areas and things like that so there we go that is the spraying stage so what i'm going to do now is actually put it all somewhat together because obviously we need to get the wheels on so uh checking which way the wheels are these are a straightforward push fit and i'm just going to push on hopefully we'll push straight forward on one there then we've got the darker one okay and just making sure you put your finger in behind them to hold them because if you just push down you might end up breaking these guys off and again how well these are going to spin on this making sure they're pushed all the way home and then what have we got two and then one okay so we can go one and it is this nice working suspension that we've got on these and a dark one okay and a light one on the front all right and there we go so you see it's quite nice because it is a, a type of working track that we've got which works really well and then obviously we've got these guys on here but things like overspray on all of this i wouldn't worry too much about because it's been spoken about and obviously speaking to steve and stuff like that when you see these things they're all sprayed like it so they have overspray all over them so i won't worry too much about that so what we can do is i said start putting this one back together and the mine plow system to be honest i'm going to leave that off because we're going to dry brush and weather it separately purely because it is so fragile and everything else like that we said before that the tracks have just had a simple coat of old dark iron as our first step what i'm going to do is i'm going to put these down dry brush them slightly then they can be fitted in and then that way when we're coming in with things like the washes dry brushing and everything else it's all going to be done in one because the reality is it's all going to weather very universally all the way over but generally i must admit i'm really happy how it's looking and everything else and the other thing we can take care of if you wanted to is that we did do all these windows in so you might see if we do the one some of these tricky ones down the back here all we got is cocktail stick and give them a scrape now what happens is to start with nothing really happens and then you just with a wooden cocktail stick scrape across them and you should like we've done there excuse the lorry unloading you can probably see it we've got the glass work now open on that one if we do one of these bigger ones at the front okay this is the beauty with acrylic and this is why i don't mess around cleaning up okay and masking and all these things because the great thing with acrylic you can do this and you can come in and scratch clean it just like that and then what we can do as you can see down there we can put the tint in afterwards all right so all these glass bits we've got to clean up just go around give them a scrape out clean those get the wheels on we get the rocket pods on as well because they all need to be done as well all the tubes and then obviously we can get the gun barrels in and glue that in this rear part now i physically glued it solidly into a position purely because it's now fixed and it's all done with the paintwork and everything else and again we want to weather everything as we go okay so that's pretty straightforward looking really really good happy with it so let me get this one together clear this away get rid of all the tape and everything else clean out the airbrush and everything else and we can start to put it together okay so we're starting to get this one together as you might be able to see we have the turret on the top and the skirts and everything else and it's really beginning to come to life at the moment it's looking quite um, flat but once it's got the wash in there some shadowing dry brushing various things like that it's gonna pop so at the moment what we're doing is we're just taking off the last of our tack that we've got buried underneath here I'll make sure we're clear on that one uh, I'm putting on the side skirts and the tracks now the tracks if you remember we had a little bit of trouble with them because we built them upside down okay but now we are correct as you can see at this end and we've got this one here so we need to actually put this through so the easiest way i found is 
to literally drop it in through the back. Okay. Mm -hmm. Come on. Works fine on the other side. Come on, get in there. So what we do, we just get in there and uh, with tweezers. And because this is a working track, it is very handy for doing, pulling it through, okay? So down under here, if you can see, you've got these little plates here. Now, I'm not sure it should go on the top or underneath. Personally, I put them underneath because if they go on top, they tend to jam everything up. So what we do is just gonna feed this along and in. And then when we get to the end here, we're just gonna wrap it somewhat around this cog and then we're just gonna pop in this end and we're gonna fish it out, okay? So then what we need to do is obviously get it to line up on the teeth, on the sprocket on the rear. And this is the beauty of how working tracks, because if it's not working tracks, it gives you no end of trouble. So all we're going to do is, hopefully it won't break on me back there, but we have our tracks down here. Now, as you can see, we've got the flat, horrible side. And the other thing as well, we've got far too many. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take them off. We want a little bit of slack, okay? But we don't need quite that amount of slack. One, two, three, okay. And we're gonna join them up. And so I want a bit of slack on there just to give it a bit of play. Also, I'll just make linking it together so much easier and then as we've done the other ends, come on, to be honest, we're just going to try and, that's better, and get hold of it. Bit of a click, there we go, and we can put these guys back on the ends. Okay, which are these pins, which, let's face it, we've had one or two issues doing this, but it's not too bad. Note to self, oil chair. Okay, so that is in. Pick it up before we break something off the top. And as you can see, we've got the different type of track there. And then the great thing is, because it is working track and we love it, we can go through. So you can see, you've got the flat end coming through again. So we're just gonna go a bit up. Okay, and that is it on, just like that. And because it's working suspension, we're not a problem on this. Okay, and that'll give us some movement in the track if we need it. It's probably a little bit loose, but I'm quite happy of how that is. I don't know, I might take another link out. Something we can come back to afterwards if is needed, but for the moment, I think we're okay, all right? So that's on there like that. Then we've got to put in these panels that fit in the side. Now, you've got this edge on here, which sticks on this edge here, all right? So quick little tip, if you take a little bit of glue, so we've got down here some of the thicker stuff, which is what I wish I'd done on the other one. We're just going to put a little bit just running down the inside of this panel. Now this is the thicker stuff. The idea of using the thicker stuff is so it doesn't dry as quick. Okay, so we can just pop a bit of this along there, which I'm happy with. All right, now I've elected not to spray in there, which I was going to, but to be honest, I'm trying to keep this continuity so you've got a little spot there there's one at the rear okay so you're just going to line them up with a pin at there and at the back don't worry about these ones all the midway through although if you wanted to this is what i did last time we're just going to pre-glue the little holes all the way along here but there's something i'll show you in a moment some of these have got big holes in some of them don't okay right so all that's in and then we'll start at one end so we're going to drop a pin in that one. Okay, and we're looking for the pin for the rear one. That pin last. Okay, now it should push in there quite nicely. Okay, then you want the rear one to go in, if I can find it, there it is. All right, and then we just give it a little bit of a nudge on the top. Then what will happen is, you should see that we'll line up with these guys running down the top. Okay, then when they line up with those, not using too much glue, we're just going to touch to weld these together. Now these don't all line up perfectly. And to be honest, I played with it on the other side and I couldn't get them to line up perfectly on the other side. Okay, but what you do want to do is lean it 
slightly in. Okay, so the entire thing pokes slightly out. I don't know how well you can see it, but it's slanting somewhat in. All right, so that's that one. Just being a bit careful how we grab it. So once you're happy that that's on, okay, and that bit of glue, to be honest, on the underside that you put in is great because it's going to hold it nicely into place. All right, and then we've got this guy, which is your top strap or top strip, which is going to go on. Okay, so again, we're just going to pre-glue the holes. And what you'll notice is yeah, there's one deep one and one shallow one. But if you do them all, it just guarantees you're all nice in position. But the end ones are the important ones. And then just down on this guy, you can do just the same, taking your slightly thicker glue. Just down here, you've got two, three lump ones that stick out. Now these are the spaces which hold it at the correct angles and all the rest of it. And then same thing again, you're just gonna come in and line up that first one, second and third, and then a push down and give it a bit of a nudge and you'll notice they're all squash in. Okay, and that is your armored skirt and your tracks all in. All right, so now we've squashed this all around. I've still got to clean out all the glass work. I haven't done that yet, but to be honest, I've got a little bit ahead of myself and wanted to show you it looking like a tank. Okay, so my rollers are gonna put on afterwards, um, the mine plow system, purely because it's like an accident waiting to happen. Okay, but we are really starting to take shape now. We've still got quite a few bits and pieces to do before we even get to the weathering. We wanna put the stowage items on now because they're gonna be slightly different colors, things like that. Those can be glued in place because again, we want them all to weather exactly at the same time. You might notice also we've done the gun barrels. We've given them a bit of a, a spray. These, the tubes for this tow missile system, I'm not exactly a fan of it. They're very wobbly and very much all over the place, but we are at least starting to take shape. We're starting to look like we look in the business and all the rest of it. The other thing as well, if it looks a little bit light, that's a good thing because it's a lighter shade, which means it's going to allow for weathering because obviously when we weather this, it's going to go darker straight away by just giving it a straightforward wash, let alone when we get in there with actually some grime and dirt and things like that to try and dirty it up. So there we go. What we're going to do now is let that dry and go off, but it's nice to see it on its tracks now after all this time and the first time in total impact.